This is a book, an electronic book in the form of a ROM card. You read it by putting it in the back of one of these Franklin digital book system units, and then you read the book on this handheld display. It's one of the many new forms of electronic publishing, which is challenging the old-fashioned way of reading a book on paper. Would you read a book on an LCD screen? Well, lots of people are. Today, we'll take a look at electronic books on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Intel, the world's leading manufacturer of microprocessors. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Bob Stein of the Voyager Company. And Bob, this is one example of an electronic publishing product. I'm not sure what category you'd put it in or what you'd call it, but it's called a hard day's night, and of course we know what that is. And show us the pieces that are inside this. Okay, Stuart, so what we've done is we've taken the entire film of A Hard Day's Night and put it in Apple's QuickTime format onto a CD-ROM. So the whole movie's on the disc. The whole movie's on the disc. Uh -huh. uh, plus we've added a book-length text about the, about the movie, mm -hmm. uh, profiles of the cast members, the crew list, etc. cetera. Uh, so show us the pieces here. Yeah, yeah, let's start. We'll show, I'll show you a piece of the movie. Uh, the movie will start playing, and here's a commentary about the movie. You can uh -huh. read along with the movie. Uh, down here in the table of contents, uh, let me go to the cast. I'll go to the grandfather. So we could look up something about any of the cast right, members. Right, here's Wilford Bramble. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a part of the movie this he's is in. Right. Okay, or uh, let's try one of the songs. Let's go to Tell Me Why. Uh -huh. So here's a, an introduction to the song. And uh, here's the song itself. That, that what it's done, it's chewed up that part of the movie. Uh -huh. So it's the movie, it's a CD, it's a book. Plus, it's all those things. Yeah, I think we're yeah. experimenting with uh, yeah. what these new uh, genres are like, and this was a really wonderful property to experiment with. All right, we're going to take a look at many of the aspects of electronic publishing today on different kinds of media, from floppies to CD-ROMs to online magazines. We'll also see the new authoring tools that let you turn your manuscript into an electronic book. One of the true innovators in this field of new media publishing is Rick Smolin. His new interactive book is called From Alice to Ocean. Smolin's book follows a young woman on her year-long journey across Australia. During the course of that year, Smolin shot over 18,000 photographs. He did an article for National Geographic, but they only used 31 pictures. He then did this 224-page book, but he still had thousands of great pictures that hadn't been used. Have you ever read a book that you loved, and when you turned the last page of the book, you had a feeling of sadness, and suddenly as if part of your, this whole world that existed inside of your head was suddenly over. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if people fell in love with Robin and were impressed by her courage and moved by her relationship with the camels and with her dog? Suddenly, you turn the last page of this book from Alice to Ocean, and there are these two shiny CDs floating in the back of the book. And, you, and you're told that there are pictures on here you didn't get to see in the book, which is one of the real pleasures for me, as I got to put many more pictures into the, onto the CDs than I got into the book. And there's a whole another way, another path through the same story. One disc is a CD-ROM that runs on a Macintosh. The other disc is a collection of photos that can be viewed on a Kodak Photo CD player. The interactive discs are included with the $50 book at no extra charge, thanks to grants from Apple and Kodak. The Apple CD-ROM has an audio track, so you can just listen to the audio on a normal music CD player, even if you don't have a CD-ROM drive for your computer. But if you can play the disc on your computer, you have complete control over what you see and hear. You're driving along for two or three hundred miles and nothing but flat, barren landscape. Rick Smolin has taken an old story and given it new life by using the power of electronic publishing. One of the things that has amazed the publishing community is I took a story which was 15 years old, which was very well known. It was the cover of National Geographic. Robin had written a book called Tracks, which sold half a million copies around the world. And suddenly we came out with a whole brand new look at it. And much to everyone's amazement, people are, are treating it as if it's a brand new thing that they've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. So if you think of all the material that publishers are sitting on all over the world, every time National Geographic does a story, these photographers shoot hundreds and hundreds of rolls of film and very little of it ever gets used. So people are realizing that, that there's a, an incredible wealth of material 
For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. For instance, go look for the Polar Explorer of Raul Amundsen, who's in the volume A. We point it and click, and it's going out. You essentially this. pulled out volume A. And there it is. There can be problems reading a book off a computer. Number one, you need a comfortable interface. And number two, if the medium is CD-ROM, you need to get around the slow access time inherent in an optical drive. Here to show us solutions to both of those problems and more are Liza Wyman of Broderbund and also back with us, Bob Stein of Voyager. Liza, this is a book called Arthur's Teacher Trouble, and it's what we normally call a book. It's got, you know, words and pictures and pieces of paper and so on. But you've taken this and turned it into this living book, this electronic book off a of CD. And tell us what happens when you turn this book into a book we read on a computer. Well, what we've done is added original music and animation and dialogue to expand the reading experience for children and provide them with an exploration environment so that they can explore within every page of the book. So it's not just the book turned into the computer, but a lot more. Yeah, and we ship the book with the CD-ROM so that so after a child explores it yeah. electronically, they can go inside the story. All right, let's, let's explore it electronically and show us how you use it. Okay, well, Arthur's dancing here, but we've got two ways to go through the stories. The read-to-me mode is non-interactive. That's for younger readers. Mm -hmm. And the let-me-play mode, that's what we'll look at now, allows okay. children to explore within every page at their leisure. This is the story of Arthur. He's uh -huh. a third-grade aardvark, and he's been forced to represent his class in an all-school spellathon. So it deals with a lot of the school time stresses that children have to deal with. All in right. their lives. What age group would this be for? Six to ten. Okay, well, let's take a look. Now we're in the first page. What's going to happen? The bell rang. Okay. The first day of school was over. You'll see an opening. Kids animation. ran out of every classroom. Everyone. But so not only can the child read the book, but there's a reader built in who actually mm -hmm. read the words to the child. And here's the animation. Here the students filed out slowly in alphabetical order. We've all had teachers like that. Yeah, right. And how many of these animations See you are in the book? Tomorrow. There's 24 pages in this book. Said their uh -huh. teacher, Mr. Rathburn. And after the animation okay, so yeah, finishes, what can you do with, say, this page? Okay, well, every word's been recorded individually, so you could practice your reading. The bell rang. You could do rap. The bell, 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 bell. If I clicked on this ball here, you'd hear the whole page read to you again. Uh -huh. And then this page is filled with hidden buttons, and you never know quite what you're going to find. There's one. We like to reward kids so that every time they explore something, something will happen. <laughs> okay. Even things that uh, an adult might not choose to click on, but a kid would. So again, it's a lot more than just the old-fashioned book. I mean, the child can really interact, play with the environment as if you were in that room. Yeah, and we've added extra dialogue too, so children can go underneath the story and hear what the characters are thinking. We had fun today, didn't we? And the kids? And you can hear what the kids are thinking. This is going to be a long year. And we all like to make fun of authority figures, so we put in a few surprises. Ooh. <laughs> Here's another one. Whoa. And one more. All right, now, now, quickly, if you could, you can do this in Spanish also. Can yeah. you? Would you just turn it into a, a Spanish version for us right sure, now? Sure, we could go into Spanish by hitting the two on the keyboard here. Uh -huh. and the page will reload in Spanish, and every word that you see as well as every word that you hear has been re-recorded with new actors and actresses to uh -huh. give the, the book the same feeling in either language. So it's totally bilingual in terms of the printed word and in terms of the spoken word. That's right. Uh, and this is it, huh? Mm-hmm. That's perfect. And how much of these CDs La cost? Well, you'll find that CD for $49.95 to $59.95, depending on where you go to buy it. All right, Bob, let's turn to Voyager and the books you have. Now, a couple of differences. You have sort of standard best-selling adult books here, uh, right. which you've turned into computer books, and you're doing floppies here. Not, you don't have to have a CD, right? That's right. Uh, we have books like uh, The Complete Stories of Isaac Asimov, uh -huh. Autobiography of Malcolm X, and the latest book about Richard Feynman, yeah. Genius, and it comes on a floppy disk formatted for the Macintosh PowerBook and we've worked very hard to make it look like a book and act like a book. All right, you also have the authoring toolkit for your expanded books. Just explain that briefly. Bob. Right, we, we made a tool that all you have to understand really is the Macintosh pull-down menu structure that lets authors, publishers, teachers, professors, students put books, put, put text yeah. into the expanded book format. So I have my text, I have that, I turned it into one of your right. kinds of books. and you can do it in hours. All right, let's take a look now. You've got the, another one up here, the picture of Dorian Gray, and show us what this expanded book looks like, what the advantages okay. are. Uh, we go into the book, and it's formatted for the power book, right. which is why it's cut off at the bottom here. And let's go into the beginning of the book, 
And this is what text looks like ni circa 1993. Right, so at the moment it looks like a book. Right. And uh, you can do all the things you expect to be able to do with a book. You can place your cursor in the margin and just type notes if you want. You can write the little notes. All right. You can, uh, if you like to mark text and vertically, uh -huh. you can do that. Uh, you can select text and make it either underlined or bold if you like to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you can mark the corner of a page by turning it down the way you normally can. Mm -hmm. One thing you can't do with a regular book is you can actually find out all the pages you have marked mm -hmm. and you can go to them that way. Uh, you're able to have large text uh -huh. that's free with this. The most exciting stuff though is what you can do in terms of searching and navigating through the book. Right. So let's take a concept like uh, youth, okay. which is an important issue in this book. And on the fly, the book is going to go and build a list for me of all occurrences of the word youth. Uh -huh. And it's going to put it for me in a list wow. over here. And let me get rid of this for you. And, and, you, can just, fast, yeah, yeah. and you can just click through these uh -huh. and it'll go and find each occurrence for you. Or we can, for any, any word in the book, you can hold the mouse down on it and you can get the first reference, the mm -hmm. previous reference, mm -hmm. the next reference, the last reference. All occurrences, which is what we did here, are all in context which instead of giving us just a list of page numbers, yeah. it's going to go through and actually give us a list with two or three words on each side, showing us the context that the word appears in. So here we see the burden yeah. of beauty, personal beauty, real beauty, everything but beauty. So it's not just a book, it's really a research tool in a way if you're working with it. It can be that, right. Yeah. And so it's real nice, you can close these up this way. Uh -huh. uh, we've got the, uh, we can go to chapters this way. Let me go to one chapter in particular. Uh, this is the first in our Modern Library series. And we asked Bennett Cerf's son, Christopher, mm -hmm. to write a little story about the history mm -hmm. of the Modern Library, because I knew that he had a tape of his father talking about the day that he actually uh -huh. bought the Modern Library. And you have that and, in here? And we've included that wow. here, so you can get to hear Bennett Cerf talking about the day he bought it. I bought the Modern Library in 1925. I've been a liberal. So again, it's a lot, mm -hmm. lot more than the original. 1923. Yes, it is. Are any graphics or pictures you have in these books? No, in general, we've uh, represented the book the, as the they text, were. But you do have audio in there. Yeah, in this case. But I know things like I, I've seen your Jurassic Park, and you do have some graphics in oh, there. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's possible to put graphics sure. in, and, and things that the toolkits made it very easy to put in QuickTime movies mm -hmm. and audio right. quotes and, and pictures and sound. So. And how many of the titles do you have out now in this format? Uh, we have 30 out in this wow. format, but now there are hundreds of people all over the world producing well, in this using format. something like your toolkit. Yeah, using, using our toolkit yeah. to produce books. All right, Bob Liza, thank you very much. Some electronic publishing ends up on magnetic or optical media, as we've seen, that you buy or load into your computer. But there's another form of electronic publishing that exists only as files on an online service. These new media journals are called zines. Jared Poor publishes his zine, called Factsheet 5 Electric, on a computer conferencing system called The Well. Factsheet 5 is a sort of reader's digest of other zines, and it covers a wide range of subjects, from art to technology. Why are zines so popular with writers? Poor says one reason is you don't have to deal with an editor rewriting your copy, and your stories are available the instant they're written. One of the main advantages of publishing electronically is it is very inexpensive to produce. Paper is expensive. It is consuming of both time and money to produce. Uh, the converse of that, unfortunately, is electronic publications are expensive to consume since you need technology or access to technology to acquire them, whereas anyone who can read can read a paper publication. Roger Karaker is a journalism teacher who also publishes a zine on the well. His zine deals with the subject of desktop publishing. Karaker says there are other advantages to electronic publishing. There's no question that right uh, that, that as things exist today that you get very high quality graphics uh, and text in a print medium and you do not get those in an electronic medium. However, you get some things in the electronic medium that you can't get in the print medium. For example, we're here at the Whole Earth Review and and they published uh, their catalog on a CD-ROM four or five years ago. And that includes sound clips from various bands. How do you do that in a print newspaper? For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
Electronic books can be more than just high-tech implementations of the printed version. Some of the new media publishing titles let you get access to information that just can't be represented in printed form alone. Here to show us some examples are Paul Worthington, editor with Multimedia World, also with us Fred Jones, the CEO of eBook. Paul, we've seen several examples so far of electronic publishing, but what are the main advantages? What are the trade-offs? I mean, it's more expensive, it's more complicated than just picking up the book. What do we get for the electronic version of the book? You get a lot of convenience that you just can't get out of a heavy text. An example here, I've got the Mayo Clinic Health Book. It's a best-selling book for people who are curious about their health, want to look up a symptom or something. So you're not going to carry that around with you? But you can <laughs> carry the CD or use this at home. It's got yeah. all the information in that book, plus animations and different things which clearly explain health topics that you can't do in text. All right, so it's more convenient in terms of size and what it has in it. How about in terms of the ability to find information? If I had the Mayo Clinic book, for example, I'm stuck with their index, right, or their table of contents. What are the advantages from a searching point of view? Well, you've fortunately had the computer to do the search for you. It can go through keywords, through topics, and rather than you flipping through the pages and dying before you find out what your disease <laughs> is, it will come up for you quickly. All right, show me with, with, you have something called Cinemania as an example up here of an electronic book. What is it and show us how that would work. Cinemania is an example of, uh, they've got three different textbooks on film on one CD, but they've also got stills from the pictures and something that you can't do in any book whatsoever, which is sound clips. So you get an idea of Show how you have to what speak. I said was true. There's no difference between the sexes. So it's obviously better than we could get out of just the book. We can hear clips. We can see those nice photos. All right, let's talk about the search engine part of this. Suppose I want to go in and, and, and look up Woody Allen films. That's what I'm interested in. How would I do that? Let's see, we got a number of different filters here. You can choose from the type of movie, the rating, the rating for the movie, yeah. the director, even like how many stars the film had and whether it won an award or anything. Okay, so, so I want Woody Allen. And boom, there's all the Woody Allen movies. Suppose you go back to that rating thing, and I don't want the bad movies that got one star. I want just, say, three or four star Woody Allen movies. Can Fortunately, most of his movies were pretty good, but you can see as, it, as you click on the star field there, the list here gets a it's, little bit shorter at a time. Yeah. All right, so you, it's on Annie Hall. You know, what, what happens when we pull a particular movie up? Well, the best thing is not only do you get the information on Annie Hall, the film, you get the full cast of, of the film, the crew, the notes on the film from the uh -huh. different books, and the best thing about it being on a computer is it's all, multi it's all searchable. And you like get a, if and I you go to a nice color still here. also. Yeah. But I want to see more about what Diane Keaton did in this film. I just click on her name. And it shows me you know, a bio right. of her, her works, her relationships, her different movies that she's made. We can go down the train and see all the films. So that again, hypertext-like, you can just sort of snake around and just follow whatever you happen to be interested in. As well as the search feed, you get more information than you would if you're just looking something up in the regular book form. Yeah. All right, Fred, let's turn to you now in ebook. What approach are you taking to electronic publishing? What are the features you're trying to put into your electronic books? Well, let me show you one of our books. This is uh, uh, The White Horse Child by Sci Hugo and Nebula Awards winning science fiction author Greg Baer. Uh -huh. uh, we have a series of elements to the story, of multimedia elements to the uh, electronic book, starting with an interview with the author himself. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a series of questions, for example, how was the White Horse Child written, which you can click on and get a digital movie response of the Child author written in answering the question. Okay. Six, I believe. Okay, yeah. That's great. One of the things you always want to do is talk to the author and you actually do it here. Absolutely. Okay, and there's a whole series of questions that you can deal with there. We also have a, a, an animation gallery and a learning guide in the, in the story as well, but the main thing is the story. The story, which I'll, I'm going to go to the, uh, to the uh, search engine uh -huh. and go to a particular page in the story that has some elements on it I want to show. All right. uh, this particular uh, story uh, is, takes place in a, in, in a very dry and ordinary world mm -hmm. for the young, young boy that's the protagonist. And he is, encounters a mystical couple who explain and teach him how to have an imagination and uh -huh. how to tell stories. So while he's in his ordinary life, we have black and white sure words do. on the screen, reinforced by icons home. that allow you I to listen to the So we can actually get the whole book read to us also. Absolutely. Okay. He didn't like What's it. the film clip icon there? The film clip icon takes you out into his world of imagination and actually shows you a color, full uh -huh. animation of the story that he's learning to tell right. from the right. mystical couple in it. So he transcends from one part of the story in black and white yeah. to this a color imagination, kind of like the Wizard sure, of Oz. Sure, sure. So what other features are in here? Uh, we also have the ability, as the stories have been read or, re or, to, or read to a, to a child, uh, to look at hot spots that bring up definitions of difficult So you got words. a word that the reader doesn't understand, boom, you click on it and you get the definition. Correct. Uh, this is one particular way to do electronic books 
designed for older children, uh -huh. where as opposed to uh, Arthur's Teacher's Trouble, where it's for pre-readers or early readers, this is for, for re uh, children who are much older, yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 years old, who are learning to read in sentences and paragraphs and concepts. And this is designed specifically yeah. to reinforce that kind of activity. All right, you have one other ebook you're going to show us on impressionism. And now, now, what new features does that bring to well, this? Well, that, this is text oriented and that is picture oriented. So the, the whole user interface and the way it operates is focuses yeah. on pictures rather than text. So we have a, uh, right, so a, a series a of, of slide trays, is one of the ways you can a access it, or you can access it by data cards. In uh -huh. this case, we've pulled up paintings of Mary Cassatt. And we can s click on one of the little icons mm -hmm. and bring up a larger version of the image. Linked to that larger image is a series of buttons across the top that mm -hmm. allows us to look at the data about the image, where, it, where it's hanging, what size it is, and what date it is. Mm -hmm. uh, a biography of the artist which can, uh, can be scrolled, read, cut and pasted, or used in a, a book report for uh -huh. a, a, a kid in school, uh, and additional details of the art, or the detail is a closer look of uh -huh. the art itself. Mm -hmm. We also have an interesting feature, which allows us to, this, since this is Impressionism, it allows us to select Impressionist music huh. to play in the background, and this is playing on the uh, Sound Blaster Wave MIDI card, so uh -huh. that it, you, you hear a very good example of impressionist music in the uh -huh. background, kind of to set the mood while you look at the paintings. Uh, we can go to an additional painting and look at two at once. So you can, as an art compare student, compare pictures, yeah. multiple pictures together and, and have essentially a, a gallery of paintings going on the screen at the same time. Wow. Uh, so this is one of a series of art history titles that, that integrate together yeah. uh, for the electronic That's library great. of art. Yeah. I just want to ask you in closing, Paul, from your point of view here as a kind of journalist looking at this stuff, how serious is the electronic publishing? Is this kind of a toy, a, a gimmick for people with a lot of money, or is this really the way we're going to be dealing with information in the future? I think in the last couple of years it's evolved from being a gimmick to something that's it's a new media, and you can't say where it's going, but um, we have people who are adding to what we have in text, and it can turn into something completely different, a whole new way of telling stories, a whole new way of entertaining and yeah. educating ourselves. Well, that's what we've seen today. Thanks very much to both of you. That's our look at electronic publishing. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, the first real PDA product is on the market. AT&T has announced the availability of its EO440 personal communicator. It's a combination cell phone, fax machine, email terminal, and pen pad. Base price is $1,999. Computers are changing the global trading business. The New York Mercantile Exchange has announced the first ever 24-hour market accessible worldwide by computer terminal for virtually instantaneous transactions around the clock. The new system was developed by AT&T and is called NYMEX. Atari has announced plans for its new Jaguar dedicated computer game system. Jaguar will use a 64-bit processor and offer 16 million colors, 3D images, and interactive multimedia. The units will be manufactured by IBM. Atari says retail price will be $200 compared to an expected $700 price tag on its main competitor, the new 3DO system. Time now for this week's software review from Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, provided courtesy of CMP Publications. Today, we're going to look at an exciting and challenging game for the Macintosh called Pear Arena. Now, this game was once shareware, and now it's commercial, and it's hot. The opening screen is this Japanese-style cartoon. Pear Arena is basically rollerball in zero gravity. You can select your league, start low. Select your opponent. They're all tough. Choose whether you want to play against the computer, an opponent, or someone else in the network. Yes, now you can bring Apple Talk to its knees by playing a game across the office. Instant replay is an option. We'll let the computer play itself. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, pair 
This game is very difficult to play. The mouse just nudges you in a particular direction. You press space to stop. If you go off the edge, you disappear. Pararena comes from Cassidy and Green in Salinas, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. A company called Ergonomics has announced a new keyboard designed to reduce repetitive strain injuries. It features angled key rows, a wrist rest, built-in trackball, and a newly designed circular pod for cursor control and function keys. First there was the Miracle Piano, but now Ibis Solutions has announced the next step in music teaching software. Soloist, a software program that uses pitch recognition technology to teach you how to play an instrument. The software requires a sound...